Growing up, I loved school. I was good at it. A people pleaser from the start who lived in a home where the adults vacillated between impossible to please or downright indifferent. I knew I could count on school to be the place where my efforts were validated and appreciated. I became friends with several teachers, babysitting for their children, participating in the clubs they advised, and seeking help as I applied to colleges. Being a teacher was my dream. I wanted to inspire young minds, ignite a love for learning, and help kids discover their interests and passions, just like some of my favorite teachers did for me. But the job wasn't what I thought it would be. Sure, I loved my students, and we did some incredible projects together. I was nominated for and won several accolades, including a Disney Creativity and Teaching Award, and was awarded grants for projects that helped facilitate things like self-publishing a book of stories my students had written and throwing a launch party at a local bookstore, sponsoring a rookie musher in the Iditarod, and learning to sew the special booties the dogs wore to protect their paws from the ice, and painting a life-sized game board on the ceiling tiles of my classroom so the kids could play the room. More and more, though, instead of spending most of my days nurturing curious minds and fostering creativity, I found myself required to administer an increasing number of tests, formative assessments, and screeners. My focus was forced to shift from building up kids so they knew how to learn and achieve incredible things to fixing problems, addressing deficits, and overcoming challenges. I had to find out what was wrong with each kiddo so I could figure out how to fix them. I hated it, but I didn't know there was an alternative at the time. I left my teaching job to write full-time from home, thinking I'd work while my kids were in school and then be there for them at the end of the school day to spend the afternoon and evenings nurturing their love of learning. Looking back, I can see how I was setting up the perfect situation for a future of homeschooling. I was taking on freelance assignments, writing books for teachers, parents, and kids, and had time during the day to make meals from scratch and bake cookies for an after-school snack. As I researched for my assigned freelance projects, textbook chapters, and classroom resources, I began to read work by John Taylor Gatto, Diane Ravitch, Charlotte Mason, Sir Ken Robinson, and more. My kids were these itty-bitty, curious beings whom I wanted more for, but didn't know what else to do besides send them to preschool, then move them on to our public elementary school, and enrich their brains and creativity once they were back home. It took watching my son Trevor's love of learning fade to wake me up to other options. 